Normally creating an AI in a game is a rather complex process. Fortunately in this one we can create a simple one relatively easily. We're going to create a new object and give it the name object underscore AI. I'm going to give it the sprite of the player orange since the computer player will be replacing the right paddle and what I'm about to do is basically going to just be a test. It's not going to be the final product so you don't necessarily have to do it yet. I'm going to add event step step and the step event correlates to the speed or frame rate of our room. Since our room is running at a speed of 30 this event will trigger 30 times a second and the action I'm going to give it is over in control and set variable and I'm going to set the object AI's Y variable and I'm going to make it equal object underscore ball dot Y. So 30 times a second the object AI is going to match its Y coordinate to that of the object ball. That's going to create an unbeatable AI but we're just testing right now so click OK, OK. We also need to open up the ball again and set up actions so that it will bounce off of our new object AI. Fortunately all we have to do is just duplicate the object player orange event. So right click it, duplicate event, and we want to set the collision to object AI. And it already sets in the action that we need. We do need to make an adjustment to this action though, so double click it and instead of object player orange here, we need to change this name to object AI. So now it will be looking for the proper object to bounce off of. Click OK. Finally, we need to create a new room to test our computer object in. Since we want to use most of the objects that we've already created in our first room, we can just come over here and duplicate it by right clicking duplicate and it will open up a new window. Come to settings and I'm going to call this room underscore 1p for one player. I'm going to turn off the grid and come over here to the object player orange. You can see down at the bottom of the window it shows the name of the object that I'm hovering my mouse over. This could be helpful because right now we have two objects that look identical. So I'm going to right click the object and delete it. Then I'm going to come back over to the Objects tab, make sure that Object AI is selected, and click on the screen, position it where it should be, and then click the check mark. I don't want objects outside the room to be removed. Then I'm going to come over here to the Assets window, and I'm going to pull the Room 1P above Room Main. Game Maker treats these rooms in order, meaning that the first room in the list is the first room that will open. Later we're going to create a menu so that we can select which room we want, but for now we'll leave it like this. I am, however, going to open up my room main again, go to settings, and this time I'm going to call it 2P instead of main for two player. Click the check mark. I don't want to remove anything. And so now let's test it and see our new AI in action. And sure enough, we have a very basic AI. However, as I said, it is a perfect AI that cannot lose because its Y position is always set to the Y position of the ball. So now we're going to go in and adjust the formula just a little bit. Let's go over to our object AI, double click it, and instead of this set variable, I'm going to delete that, and I am instead going to use a jump to position. So drag that over. And I have another little formula that we can use. In the Y parameter, open parentheses, object underscore ball dot Y minus Y, close parentheses, divided by 6, and check relative. So this is going to work similarly to what we just had. However, this formula will cause a little bit of a slowdown, so that a lot of the time the paddle can keep up with the ball but if we hit the ball at a steep angle or the ball speeds up too much then the AI will not be able to keep up and we can score a point against it. This number six here is a number I think feels right. You can change this number up or down to make the computer opponent faster or slower but I think six works just fine. 
So click OK, click OK, and let's test it once again. And we see that the AI does keep up with the ball, but we can actually win against it now because there is that little bit of a slowdown. If the ball bounces at too much of an angle, the paddle cannot keep up. But it's still challenging enough. that we might actually lose against it. Well, anyway. So again, you can just tweak this number in here, this divided by 6, and that will make the computer opponent easier or harder, depending on what you set it to. Since the scorekeeping and win conditions are kept inside the object ball, when we create this new room, we don't have to concern ourselves with adding anything else. So we now have two complete game modes, one against a human player and one against a computer. In the next video, we'll look at adding a menu so that we can choose between the game modes, and we'll polish the game up with some sound effects and background music.